Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to do faster RCNN fine tuning using PyTorch. So the goal of the video is actually th three of them. So first I am going to explain you what fine tuning is and what actually this code means and this is exactly the crux of um, uh, faster RCNN fine tuning. Then I am also going to explain to you the backbone network and how the entire fine tuning works. Not only back backbone network but what are these fully connected layers and what are these two layers at the last and how they all actually are changed and you know tweaked in order to do the fine tuning. And lastly I am also going to give you a uh, code run through. Basically I am going to explain you an example of how we are going to use fast, uh, faster RCNN for fine tuning. Okay, so first let's start with this part. Okay, so whenever you do the fine tuning of faster RCNN, you will have you will see this part. It basically comprises of four lines. This line, which is the basically the first one, that is to get the faster RCNN module. And lastly, these two are obviously important, but the most important part is this fast RCNN predictor. So what all of this means and how all of this works is basically I'm going to explain you in the collab in I think just a minute. Okay. So what you actually need to understand is the first line is basically getting the model that is pre-trained model. It will, it will be downloading and then you need number of classes, number of features, in features. I'm going to show you in the next slide and then finally you will be using this. So what actually happens when you download the model? That is when what actually happens when this first line of code is run. What happens is basically this full model, this entire thing is downloaded. Okay. So this is the backbone network, maybe VGG and some other things. Important thing is this two, FC6 and FC7. So I'll show you in the collab in just a second. But what happens is these two uh, the final or uh, fully connected layers will be there. And then this one will be our prediction or classification layer. And this one will be our uh, layer for bounding box prediction. So if you remember the fast, faster RCNN architecture, we had one for classification and then we had one for uh, predicting the bounding boxes. So obviously if you see over here you are having in features as 1024. So if you see the last slide you can see uh, ROI box predictor CLS score dot in features. So actually what you are having CLS score is over here you can see over here CLS score and in features is 1024. So here basically in features will be 1024. Wait a second I will be showing all of this in Google Collab also. Okay. And then you can see the dimension is N1. 1024 is the in features, uh, in features and N1 is the out features. What is N1? The number of classes uh, and one for background. So basically let's say if you are doing cat versus dog. So you will have two classes cat and dog and plus one for background. So three N1 will be three. And for the bounding box predictor you will have four times three that is twelve. So this in features will be same because obviously it is both of them are coming from FC7. So fully connected layer 7 and hence in features has to be same but out features for this one is n1 and this one is 4 into n1. So for uh, uh, dogs versus cat you will have 4 into 3 that is 12. Okay. So what actually happens in fast RC, faster RCN fine tuning is you will remove this layer. Okay. You will totally remove which means it will totally be removed. Okay. And what happens then is you add a new layer. This is untrained. Okay which means that this has not been fine tuned and it has just been initialized by random numbers. And then what you do, you run your, uh, let's say you give an image and this one will be trained. Okay. So your whole data set will be given for whatever number of epochs. And the main idea is to train these two layers. Now you can also train the other layers by, you know, if you want, like for example, when I do it, I generally train all the layers. Okay. But the main thing is to train these two layers. So now again, N2 is different than N1, which means if you remember back here n1 was there so this was uh, the model that we downloaded most probably this was trained on coco data set which means the n1 will be 91 90 for all the classes and one is for the background but here let's say if you are doing cat, cat versus dog this will be three as i explained sometime back okay so we'll have this for classification and this for bounding box prediction now let's go to collab and see how some of it or rather the model actually works Okay, so now I have opened my collab and let's see how we can um, basically get the model and see for ourselves what are the things that were important. Okay, so I'm going to say torch vision, import torch vision and then I'm going to say model is equals to torch vision 
dot models dot detection and this is the way you get faster rcnn so you say faster rcnn underscore res net uh, 50 fpn okay and here you have to say pre-trained equal to true okay so we will download like this and then we will say model so it will be downloaded so as you can see it has downloaded and our model has been shown over here so i want to go at the last okay so the, this is the entire model but i want to focus at the last so remember there was fc6 and fc7 so this is the fc6 and this is the F, fc7 and you remember i showed you in that code which you can see on the screen this faster rcnn predictor so this is what I said it will have CLS score and B box predicted. Okay. So this is something that has already been trained here. You can see 91. Why? Because this has been trained on Coco data set. Coco data set has 90 classes. So 90 and one is for background and this is 364 is 91 into four. Okay. So what we have to do, we have to remove this. If you remember from the slides and then add our own fast RCNN predictor. Okay. So this is what is going to be done and nothing else will be touched. Everything else will be removed and this is what is going to happen. So now let's go to our Kaggle notebook to see a code. Okay. So we have come to our Kaggle notebook. So what we are going to do is basically V detection. So um, V head detection. Basically what will happen is you will be given an image and in that there will be some V heads as you can see in the screen right now. What we have to do, we have to design a, uh, we have to fine tune a faster RCN model to find the location of these wheat heads. So how I'm going to do first, I'm going to instantiate some or rather import some libraries and then some more libraries over here. Okay. So till here, everything was fine till torch vision. Then I have also imported a transforms. And if you remember, we had, we had to get the fast RCNN predictor. So it is over here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the CSV file for the uh, wheat uh, training data. So if you see the train, uh, train data frame, you can see the image ID is there. Height, uh, sorry, width and height of the images are there. Now all the height and width are 1024. So that is good. We don't have to change anything. Now see bounding box. So these are the coordinate. This is in the form uh, x1, y1, and width and height. As you can see on the screen right now. So x1, y1 is basically the top left corner, and width is the width, and height is the height. But the problem with this format is that F, uh, that faster RCNN requires it in the, in the format of x1, y1 and x2, y2. That is top left will be x1, y1 and bottom right will be x2, y2. But you don't have to worry because x1 plus width is giving, going to give you x2 and y1 plus height is going to give you y2. Which basically means we have to change a bit. And source we will drop, height we will drop and width we will drop. So basically you are doing exactly this over here. You are breaking this B box into components. And then what you are doing, you are getting it all and I'm going to show you the direct results. Okay. And don't worry, I'll be coding this step by step in the next video. So um, if you want a step by step uh, solving of this uh, problem, then uh, wait tomorrow. I'll be uploading the video or yeah, tomorrow or day tomorrow I'll upload the video. So at the end, what you get is this, that is, I only have the image IDs. Obviously you can see over here image IDs. Now, uh, obviously in one image, there were multiple beat heads. So, um, there are repeated, but all of these are X1, Y1, X2, Y2 format, means, which means all of the bounding boxes. So, I have got the unique images over here uh, by getting, uh, by doing this df dot image id uh, dot unique and these are the unique images. Now, here what I have done is I have written a uh, custom data set. Now, one important thing to note here is this part, target. Now, if you look at the faster RCNN documentation, you will see that when you are training the uh, or rather fine tuning the model, you have to give two things to the model after, uh, you know, after you give the, you gave the image, you also need to give two things. That is the box coordinate, obviously that we have seen over here. You can see the box coordinates x1, y, uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. So this thing has to be given and one more thing has to be given that is labels. Now, since we are doing only beat classification, our label is only one or uh, we will be giving two because uh, one is for background, but what we are detecting is only wheat head. That means only one in cat versus dog. There will be two. That is we are detecting cat dog and plus one for background. So I'm not going to say plus plus one plus one. 
I'm just going to give you the number of classes and at the end we'll add plus one. So in this case, we are only detecting we had, so we will say one. Okay. So as you can see also torch dot once. Okay. So basically here you open the image every time and then you do a torch dot one to get the, um, all the labels and all the labels obviously will be one. And then you, uh, put it in the dictionary and at the end, you just uh, send the image with this dictionary. Okay. So after this, we are just doing a train test split because, uh, we have, and here we are using some custom function, uh, very simple. We are just returning the data by custom function, custom collate function. Uh, I already have a video on custom collate. Uh, you can go and see collate is basically if you are, uh, if your data that you're getting from the, uh, data set class is not in, let's say, uh, same number of, uh, so obviously every image will have different number of bounding boxes. If every image had the same number of bounding boxes, then we did not need collate. You know, we, uh, we could have di directly done it. But the problem is that all the images have different number of beat heads. And that's why you have to find a way to just pass the image. Okay. And pass the data. So I have just passed the data over here. I'll be changing it in the for loop. So this is something that I have explained. Okay. Number of classes is basically two by one for wheat head and one for background in features. As you saw, it was the out layer from, um, from the FC seven. So, uh, if you remember model ROI head box predictor, CLS score, and then in features, and this one also I have explained, this is what we are adding and it requires two, uh, two inputs or two parameters in features and number of classes, which both are here in features is here and number of classes is here. So once you uh, hit this, once you run this cell, you'll, your model will be automatically downloaded. Then obviously you will have to pass it to the device. Uh, I used CUDA. So basically I use GPU. Then you have to also, pa also give the optimizer. I gave uh, SGD stochastic gradient descent. You can definitely change whatever you like. I'm running this for five epochs. So if you see over here, our training loop will be running for five epochs. The num of epochs is five. So Every time image has to be given, it has to be given as a list of images, which means, so obviously you can see over here data. So if you remember the custom collate function over here, I just returned data. I did not do anything. So all our data is coming over here. Okay. So you will have to uh, see the next video that I'll be giving that I'll be posting, I think uh, tomorrow. So in that I'll be going uh, step by step. I'll be coding everything. I think it will be like uh, more than one hour, whatever. So what happens here is image has been, so images is a list. Okay. It's an empty list. And then for every uh, image that comes, we are appending it to the list. And for every, um, let's say your, uh, uh, the dictionary that we had got, we are actually sending it to the device and again, getting it into the tar variable. So tar dot boxes, a targ of boxes and targ of labels. And then finally we are adding it to the targets, targets list. Okay. So after that, what we are going to do, we are going to have our loss function or uh, loss function. So loss function here is quite uh, typical because there are multiple losses. There is classification loss and there is uh, prediction loss uh, the bounding box loss. So we are uh, summing it over all the losses. And then what we are doing, we are uh, obviously we are adding it to the epoch loss. And then finally we are doing back propagation. Okay. So I have run for five epochs. And as you can see, my uh, error was decreasing continuously from 211.83 it went to 152.96 you can go on further also but for me it worked okay um then i have put the model in the evaluation mode obviously and then what i have done is basically i have taken one uh, validation set now since we did not do any hyperparameter optimization we can use the validation set because the model has not seen the validation set so remember on top we had uh, we had broken the um, let's say the data set into test and train. Okay. So yeah, over here, test and uh, train and validation. Okay. So here we are using the validation. Okay. So we are taking only one image. We are taking the first image. Then we are also passing, uh, we are getting the boxes and the labels. And what we are going to do is we are going to just give the image. So while the model is in eval mode, you just have to give the image because obviously the boxes will be predicted. So as you can see over here, output is the boxes. So this is something that has been given by the predicted. Uh, uh, yeah, the model has predicted these boxes. Then let's go down. You will see labels. Now, obviously we, since we gave only uh, wheat head, there's only one label one, 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 one. 
and the scores are over here you can see 0 0.98 0. again 98 0. 0.9774 and so on these are the scores now what we do we take all the out boxes that we got over here um, let me show you again so we got these boxes as you can see boxes is here boxes written and these were the bounding boxes okay so we take the boxes and we also take the scores over here we, say, we take the boxes and we take the scores after that what happens is now you use a non-max suppression so i just uh, yesterday i uploaded the video of non-max suppression so you can go and see what it does is basically it takes all the boxes over here all the boxes it takes all the scores from where here boxes and here scores and this is the threshold of uh, IOU. So if the IOU is greater than this threshold, it will be removed. Uh, if you don't understand, uh, yes, just yesterday I posted the video on NMS. Uh, if you go on to the full video of where I do it line by line, the coding, uh, that will again explain, uh, I'll, I'll be explaining even there. Okay. So lastly, I'm going to give you the shape. So initially it was 61. So it's, it reduced it to 51. The non-max suppression reduced it to 51. Now after that is basically just taking the image and trying to um, show it over here. So you can see over here the image is, um, let me go down. So yeah, basically this is the image and as you can see the um, wheat heads are over here and it has been detected by the bounding box. You can see another wheat head, you can see another wheat head, another one, here also another one, another one. So uh, you can see most of the wheat heads have been detected. So it's a pretty large image that's why it's not fitting. But you can see the wheat heads have been detected. So this is how faster RCN and fine tuning is done. If you have any question, ask in the comment section. I hope you understood the video and bye.